What's up gaming nerds? Welcome back to Nerd Space. I am your host Ruben and today I'm taking a look at three big demos that released in the last week or two. Specifically, we're talking about Alone in the Dark, the demo for that, the prologue, playable prologue. We also got two brand new demos that came out earlier this week, Liza P, which is pretty much a Soulsborne type of game set in the universe of Pinocchio. I know that doesn't seem like it mesh well, but actually stay tuned a little bit later. And then finally, the Final Fantasy 16 demo released recently as well. And I want to dive down to all three of these and let you guys know which of these demos surprised me the most, which of these demos won me over, which one do I feel like was the better demo, and how much more excited I am for each of these games potentially after playing these demos. So before we jump into today's video, let me just remind you guys, if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button if you like this video, dislike if you didn't like this video, and share this video with your friends and family. So without further ado, let's get it! So let's start with the one that I was probably the most disappointed by and was probably my least favorite demo of the three. And that's gotta be Alone in the Dark. Or technically, the demo is called Grace in the Dark because it's a prologue where you play as Grace, a character, a little girl, in the universe of Alone in the Dark. And it's supposed to kind of like set the atmosphere for you going into this game that releases later this year in October. Problem is, is that there wasn't really much gameplay at all. It didn't give me a feel for how the gameplay was going to feel. It was more just about setting the scene, setting the, the immersive environment. And while that's great and all, and I'm probably going to get this game regardless because I'm a huge survival horror fan. The fact of the matter is, is that nothing about this game really won me over from this demo specifically. I didn't get to see the combat. I didn't get to see the gameplay. There was so much more that could have been added into it. And I get it. It's a demo for a game that's coming out later this year. But if you compare it to the other two demos I played recently, it feels like there's a lot to be missed here. I don't need a demo to be, you know, over an hour, two hours long. I just need maybe like 20 minutes of a demo of just showing me what the game is going to be about. Show me some of the mechanics, the gameplay. And when you compare it to the other two demos I played this week, it's really hard to compare this one to them because this is like an eight minute demo. If you're lucky, if you explore a little bit and all it really does is give me a couple jump scares and set the mood, which I appreciate, but I want to see the gameplay as well. Regardless of the fact I am still anticipating this game, I feel like the demo probably lowered that expectation a little bit for the game, but I'm still going to play it because, you know, you know your boy. I'm a survival horror fan. I got to play pretty much every survival horror game out there. It'll be crazy for me not to touch it, especially since this is pretty much the inspiration behind creating the Resident Evil franchise. Well, the original game was at least. So yeah, I'm going to be checking this game out. I'm really excited for it, despite the demo not being all that great. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Am I wrong here? Am I expecting too much out of a demo, I guess? Maybe I'm just spoiled after playing these other two games demos, which let's jump into that now. So the second one I want to talk about is Liza P. And while this wasn't my favorite demo out of all three of them, this one probably surprised me the most. I probably had no intention of picking this game up, honestly. I was thinking that it was just pretty much a knockoff, a ripoff of the Dark Souls games, of Elden Ring, stuff like that. And it didn't really look interesting to me in the whole set in the Pinocchio universe kind of made it weird for me and it just didn't seem like a game I wanted to play. However, after playing this demo, I am very much excited for this game and I am definitely picking this game up. This game was a lot of fun to play the demo and it's actually a pretty lengthy demo, especially <laughs> especially if you're as bad as I am in the Soulsborne games because I've died multiple times and I mean multiple times playing this demo. So if you don't know anything about the Soulsborne games, they're pretty much really difficult games that it takes a lot of concentration and focus in order to get through the game. Think Elden Ring. If you've ever played Elden Ring, that's pretty much in the vein of what this is. However, this is set in the Pinocchio universe, and while that doesn't seem like it would mesh well together, it actually does a really good job of setting the, the mood and the environment with the Pinocchio universe because now you have all these different creations of puppets all fighting each other and different variations of them with some unique enemy variations, unique enemy types. And it created a really immersive story just from the little bit I did play of it so far. Basically you play as Pinocchio, one of Geppetto's best creations, and you set out to meet 
a couple different other characters and while you're also trying to find Geppetto who has apparently gone missing. Like I said, it's a really, really interesting game. I definitely recommend checking this out. I don't want to spoil any more about it other than the fact that the combat, I will say, feels a little lackluster. I think one of my favorite things about the Dark Souls games and the Elden Ring game is that for someone like me, I can pick the type of player I want to be. So I can be an archer or I can be a mage. And those were my go-to because honestly, I'm not the best when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat in these Soulsborne games. I always prefer just being an archer where I can keep my distance or just, you know, playing the easy route and being a mage. But this game, it's a little bit more difficult to be that because technically from the little bit I have played, again, I haven't gotten too much into it. It looks like you're mainly primarily a sword fighter with different types of variations of moves, including your left arm has some different abilities like a grapple hook that can pull enemies closer to you. You are also able to change the different outfits and equipment on your character, so that's a really cool creative aspect of this game. However, you can't create your own character like most Soulsborne games are like, mainly because obviously you're playing as Pinocchio and you can't really change the look of Pinocchio. And the graphics look fantastic. This game looks beautiful and I think that's one of the things that drew me into this game. It brought me to this atmosphere and it felt really creative jumping down into this. But I think the thing that's going to help this game stand out against all of the other Soulsborne games, because I think the biggest problem I have with Soulsborne games is that the story is, you know, roughly not there at all, almost. Elder Ring is probably the one where you get the most story from, but even then, it's a very, very ish story whereas when you take a look at this game this game has a very concrete story you are playing as pinocchio you're trying to find geppetto and you're going through some other different story elements that we'll find out more when we play the game so i can definitely see a beginning and an end to this game and i think it's going to feel a lot more satisfying playing through this game when it comes to the story versus some other Soulsborne games Overall, this was the biggest surprise out of the three demos because I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, so I knew I was going to love that. I thought I was going to love Alone in the Dark, and it was, you know, whatever. But this game, I ha came into this one with the lowest expectations, and honestly, I am happy to say that I am definitely getting this game. I really loved it. Despite the simplistic gameplay mechanics, it actually has an atmosphere and a story that has me connected with the game, and I definitely want to get my hands on this. So let's move to the last game. Now, obviously coming to this, the expectations for me were already high because it is a Final Fantasy game. However, connecting with the character himself, Clive, I felt like it was gonna be a little bit boring because from the trailers, this character just didn't really stand out to me that much. I compare him to some of the other Final Fantasy characters and I'm like, what makes this guy like great? What makes him unique? And man, was I wrong on so many levels. So first off, like I said, this was the one I already had high expectations for, but they even exceeded those expectations because they put a good portion of the game into this demo. And what's great about this is they actually set it up to where the demo, the gameplay you had in the demo is saved and it's going to transition over to the main game. So it's a really, really great feature that they decided to include with this game. So let's start by talking about how beautiful this game is. This game was made specifically for the PlayStation 5, and you can definitely tell. I think this is the first time, and I felt it with Jedi Survivor in parts, but because of the lags and stuff, I didn't feel as much. But this is the first time where I can look at this game and I'm like, damn, this is the next generation. I feel next gen is written all over this game. This game is beautiful, it's gorgeous, the combat feels fluent, everything about this game screams next generation. And I'm so happy they built this game from ground up on the PlayStation 5. Speaking of the gameplay, let's talk about that for a little bit because honestly, that's probably one of the weaker parts, but I was okay with it specifically because I've always been a fan of just simplistic Final Fantasy gameplay. I don't need some crazy over the top Kingdom Hearts level gameplay mechanics, which I love that. Of course, I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. But I'm okay with just the simplistic mechanics that we've seen in the demo. Now, I also didn't play the extra challenge yet, so maybe we see a little bit more of that in that, and we'll and I'll check that out later. For the most part, the gameplay was satisfying enough for me, and it was just really cool and beautiful. Even during the gameplay moments, it still felt like a next generation game. But I think the thing that surprised me the most has to be the story. Oh my god. God, this story is gonna be amazing. I can already tell just from playing the demo that this story has the potential to be the best story 
in the Final Fantasy franchise. And I do see Game of the Year written on this game, by the way. Don't get me wrong, I love my Resident Evil 4 remake. I'm sure Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, even though I'm not a huge Zelda fan, please don't murder me, guys. But I'm sure Tears of the Kingdom is probably going to be Game of the Year. But I feel like this is definitely a game that at least deserves some conversations around game of the year when it releases if it's as good as this demo shows it off to be but the story like i said the characters those two things have really hyped me up for this game i don't want to dive down to spoilers i'm going to stay away from the spoilers but let me tell you this story in just a small demo portion of the game will definitely get you thinking wow like i cannot wait to see where this story goes next because it takes some really interesting turns and makes some really interesting decisions as far as the story goes and this is just a demo i think without a doubt this is probably the best demo i've ever played so hands down of these three games i feel like final fantasy 16 was definitely the biggest and best performance when it came to the demo not surprising but even then it still exceeded expectations I feel like Alone in the Dark was definitely the the biggest disappointment, honestly. I expected a little bit more, which is sad to say because me being a huge survival horror fan of the three demos, the survival horror game is the game that I like the least. And then Liza P is the biggest surprise because again, that game, I went into it low expectations and I came out of it pretty hyped and pretty excited to play this game. But let me know in the comments, guys, which of these three demos got you the most hype for the next title? And which of these three games are you definitely picking up on its release? Let me know in the comments, share this video with your friends and family, and I'll see you guys on the next Nerd Space. Take care.